Hey y'all, it's Brittany and welcome back. This week we are hopping into a new episode of our new series, Snapped in Skincare, also known as Clean Skin, Dirty Deeds. And this week we will be talking all about Mrs. Kimberly Herico. So if you wanna hear all about Miss Kimberly and how her husband met his unfortunate fate, stay tuned. So today it's daylight, so we will be doing another daytime skincare routine this week. I actually just finished my collagen coffee. I kind of mentioned it to you guys in the last video about the collagen powder that I put in my coffee because you know skin has to work from the inside out, having good skin, clean skin, clear skin. You have to do it both ways. You have to do it topically and you also have to do it internally. So make sure you're taking care of your insides, sis and sir. It's very simple. It's just simply adding collagen powder to your coffee. The cleaner, the better. Collagen typically does not have that same yucky taste that regular protein powder does. It is generally tasteless, so it doesn't interfere with the flavor of whatever it is that you're drinking, whether you put it in a protein smoothie, a regular smoothie, a coffee, a juice. You don't taste the actual collagen in it. And the collagen that I have been using is actually a marine collagen, so it's a super clean collagen. And it comes from a company called The Reserve. And again, I've shared this with you already, so if you haven't gotten it already, what are you waiting for? This product, y'all, depending on the quality of your collagen, you can get some funky taste. So make sure you're getting high quality products, high quality superfoods and collagens and things like that that you're putting inside of your body because you want the best results. But the marine collagen is, again, good for youthful skin, great, thick, full, strong hair. It also helps with those joints, those mega knees, your muscle mass, especially if you're trying to work out, it's a good source of protein. So all of these things are great. It also helps your liver, your bones, like all of the above. Why not add it? It's tasteless. It doesn't, it's, it's inexpensive. And y'all, I even have a code for y'all in the description box. So if you wanna get 50% off, of some high quality collagen then go ahead and make sure you click that link down below because we want to take care of our skin right you got to do it both ways and the other product that i've been using is the reserves hair skin and nails gummies and i can definitely tell the difference in my nails i'm working on growing my nails back i had a recent set on and you know how damaging that could be when you're soaking nails off but this time my nails are strong after i've soaked them off so this has really been working out for me as well so go ahead and check them out they're a great clean company with a wonderful story they also make sure that they don't keep a lot of stock on hand because the key to these superfoods and vitamins and things that you're putting into your body is the freshness so they don't keep very much on hand in the warehouse kind of sitting around they want to make sure the quality is fresh they also make sure that they are you know, doing their quality checks and making sure there's no impurities in any of their products as well. So you don't want to miss out on getting 50% off of some high quality stuff. So make sure you check it out down below. If you've had it before, if you tried it out, let me know what your favorite is. Right now, those two are my favorites. I am gonna be trying the blue spirulina as well. Those are great in smoothies and it's tasteless, I heard, so I'll be letting y'all know. That's better for like weight loss and things like that and helping with appetite, but I feel y'all in. Y'all know I always keep it coming for y'all. I want y'all to be healthy from the inside out. Now, let's get into this story. So Kimberly and Steven Rico were married. They had one daughter and things seem to be going pretty well. Kimberly was a surgical technician and Steven or Steve for short was a golf course ground supervisor. So they, you know, had a really pretty good life. They were complete opposites though. So 
Kimberly was more of the outgoing social butterfly. She was very open and loved socializing and making friends and that kind of thing. And Steve, on the other hand, was very quiet. He was reserved. He was kind, but they were just complete opposites. And you know, they say opposites attract, so why not? It seemed to work for them, at least initially. We know this always goes south at some point. It was said around 1998 that Kim and Steve started to have some marital issues that they were trying to work on. They had had conversations about, you know, what it would take for their marriage to continue and to grow and be strong uh, versus taking the other route of divorce. And Steve seemed to be, you know, really working hard on the things that his wife asked of him in order to make the relationship better, spending more time and focusing more on his wife and things that she feel like she needed. He was really working hard at that. And it appeared that Kimberly was also trying to work towards rekindling the marriage and fixing their relationship, but meh. So either way, on Valentine's Day weekend of 1998, Kim and Steve decided they're going to go to a nice little resort for kind of a couple's retreat to help work on their marriage and rekindle their marriage in St. Michael's, Maryland. And they went and one of the things that was included in this resort stay was a murder mystery dinner party. Now, We've all heard of these before. You kind of go, you sit down, and while you're having cocktails, the actors are kind of out and about trying to build a story, create the storyline, and then all of a sudden, you know, something happens. And then it's dinner time, and now you have to figure out who, what, where, why, when. That's what they attended. They seemed very happy there. People that were sitting at their table, they weren't sitting at a, a solo kind of table. So the people that were there with them said that they were very happy. Kim was very outgoing. She seemed like a, a good time. And they didn't notice any strain or issues between the couple whatsoever. Now, after the dinner party, it was said that Steve went back to the hotel room, but apparently Kim had left to go run an errand as the original story goes. And when she came back from running that errand, she found that her suite was on fire. So she immediately called emergency services and firefighters came, they put out the fire. They go in and they find Steve deceased and clearly burned from the fire. Now, luckily the fire was kind of closed off. It was insulated, all the rooms were insulated really, really well, they said, so that there wasn't really enough oxygen to make the fire spread very much, which was a good thing for the resort and for the other people that were staying there. So the fire was pretty much contained to the one area in the suite. Now, when firefighters went in, they also found beer, cigars and a Playboy magazine that it appears that he was reading while he was kind of laying around on the floor in the hotel room. Now, originally when they saw the cigars, they thought, you know, maybe this was a typical case of a smoker who accidentally set their room on fire, fell asleep smoking a cigar and that set the room on fire. But they didn't find any ashes or anything near him from a cigar. Now, also when the medical examiner actually examined his body and did the autopsy, they found that there was just normal levels of carbon monoxide in his system. And also they found that there was no soot or signs of smoke inhalation in his throat or anywhere else in his lungs, any of that whatsoever. So to investigators, it was clear that Steve was dead already before the fire started. Now, police also tried to replicate starting a fire with a cigar, specifically this brand called Backwoods. That was the brand that was found. They tried to start a fire in the same manner as the way that Steve was found and they couldn't do it. They took a number of different cigars and they put them up against the pillowcase, which would be probably the most logical way to start a fire in a hotel room since they use flame retardant 
bed sheets and spreads and all of that stuff. They tried to start the fire and the cigar was just never strong enough to actually start an actual fire in that hotel room. So where did the fire come from? Who, who started the fire? Where, where did it come from? After they figure out, okay, the cigar could not have been the start of the fire. That could not have been the reason that the fire started. So investigators decide to bring in basically accelerant and explosive dogs who are trained to find explosives or accelerants in a crime scene or in any given area to help the investigators determine what really caused the fire. Now, the dogs did signal, they did find an accelerant in the room, but when the lab went to test the areas of where the dogs signaled that there was accelerant present, they could not find anything in the labs. Now, that's not necessarily unusual because depending on the accelerant that you use, it can evaporate quickly and the, the labs would not be able to find that. That necessarily didn't mean that there wasn't an accelerant there. It was just that the lab could not confirm what the dogs had found. Now, the other significant thing here was Steve didn't smoke. He couldn't stand the smell of cigars, cigarettes. He was very vocal about he didn't understand why people smoked. So why were there cigars? in the hotel room if he didn't smoke. So obviously with all this information piling up, the investigators rule it in a arson. So this is now, you know, an active crime scene. This is not an accident where he accidentally killed himself. This is a crime scene. So you know the first person that police are looking into, it's gonna be the person that's closest to you, especially if you're married or in a relationship or just got out of one, and that is going to be Kim. And they were not wrong. So when we look into Kim, we find out, A, Kim was having an affair with a 23-year-old man who was 10 years younger than she was, and a lot of her friends and family of both sides said basically she had been basically stringing Steve along, pretending that she really wanted to work on the marriage and she was trying to reconcile with him and he was doing everything that he could because he truly loved his wife and she had already made her, her mind that she was going to be leaving. Like she wanted no parts of the marriage anymore, but she didn't tell Steve that. Police also find that Steve has more than $650,000 in insurance money that has been taken out on his behalf and Miss Kim is the beneficiary. And in fact, shortly before they went on this couple's retreat to repair their marriage, she had taken out a $250,000 life insurance policy on his behalf. It's always money, y'all. It's always money. Please finally talk to Kim to see what is going on, sis. What is happening here? Please clear it up for us. So she said, you know, yes, we were having issues in our marriage, which is why we went to this resort on Valentine's Day to try to, you know, fix it, rekindle the marriage, rekindle the relationship. So they went to the dinner party. And according to her, they both went back to the room and she claimed that Steve was basically all over her trying to force her to have sex with him and she kind of denied him she turned him down she didn't want any parts of that that night so of course that's her husband he was you know feeling some type of way about it they're there to rekindle the relationship you know, I don't know the ins and outs, so maybe they weren't there yet on her end in the rekindlement, but at least he felt like they should have been and she wasn't having it. So he felt some type of way. She didn't feel comfortable. So she left the resort and she went, as she claimed, she was heading to a friend's house that lived in nearby Easton. Now Easton is about 15 minutes away. And she said that she got lost going to her friend's house. So 
after she got lost, she decided she was just going to turn around and she was going to come back to the resort. So when she came back to the resort, that's when she found her hotel room on fire with Steve inside. Now, one of Kim's co-workers also came forward and said that Kim had approached him and basically offered him about $50,000 if he would kill her husband. Now, he said that in that moment, he took it as a joke. He didn't think that she was serious about it in any way. So his response was to say, oh, why don't you just put him to sleep forever with some succinylcholine and nobody will ever have the difference. And he thought it was a good joke to tell at that time. Wasn't funny, bro. Wasn't, wasn't funny. Because in fact, police thinks that's exactly what she does. Now, because of Kim's profession working as a surgical technician, she has easy, readily available access to succinylcholine. It's a compound that is used to relax the muscles of the neck, the throat, for patients who are undergoing surgery before they intubate the patient or put a tube down their throats. So it's not a narcotic necessarily, so it's not treated as such, it's not monitored as such. So she could just really just grab it whenever she felt like it and nobody would ever know the difference. Now, the other thing about succinylcholine is that it is also not traceable in the body, or at that time it was not traceable in the body, because the body breaks down the compound so quickly, almost immediately, it's very hard to trace succinylcholine once it's administered to a patient or a person whatsoever. Now, police also found a clerk that worked near the resort at a store or gas station near the resort. And this clerk vividly remembered that Kimberly Rico went into the store where she was working and she bought beer and she bought backwood cigars. And when asked, you know, you get a lot of customers. Why do you remember specifically that it was this woman who bought these items? And she said, well, I remember specifically because I saw her hair. She had red hair, very vibrant red hair, and I loved her hair. And ladies, you know how we get when we see things that we like on other people, especially if you were a supporter of your fellow woman. You like to show love, right? So not thinking anything of it, the clerk was like, oh my God, love your hair color. Where did you get it done? And I guess Kim felt some type of way about it because sis was like, this is my natural hair color. Like, what do you mean? Like, what are you saying? And kind of walked away with an attitude. So when she gave her attitude, anybody that gives me attitude, I'm going to remember. Okay. So I know exactly as soon as she said that sis was right on point. She knew who that woman was. So Police had a witness that it was not Steve that bought the beer or the cigars. It was actually Kim. Now, it was also said that she really didn't want to help the family whatsoever with the planning of the funeral arrangements, the memorial service for Steve, but she did want to say so in how his body was treated. She was demanding that he be cremated. Apparently, it was a last, like uh, uh, his like last request and she wanted to honor that request is what she was saying but the family felt like it was a bit more than that because she was super pushy so the family felt like maybe they were trying she was trying to rush the process and get rid of any possibility that investigators could go back and test his body at any point and that's a very smart thing to think on her part because we know that science advances quickly. So even if at that time they didn't have a way to test his tissue for whatever she used to poison him down the line, two years, five years later, could have very well come up with a test and they could have tested him at that point. So friends also came forward and were like you know what she's been asking what we've been saying to the police why does she want to know what we're saying if she ain't got nothing to do with it why does that concern her so all of this stuff was just adding up you know she ain't have no day ones obviously because everybody was telling so with all this adding up police arrested her for arson and for the murder of her husband steven rico 
The trial for Kim began in January of 1999. And basically, they kind of used the law of deduction in terms of what prosecutors thought happened. So they made sure that the medical examiner had tested for every possibility that could have possibly caused the death of, of Steve Frico. And they basically eliminated every other possibility other than it being something that was not traceable being administered to him. And that is what caused his death. There was no natural causes. There was no disease. There was no other elements present in his body. His alcohol level was at 0%, even though Kim had told police that he was drinking super heavily that night and he drank the beers that were in the room after that. So he was extremely drunk. There was no alcohol present in his system whatsoever. There was no other drugs present in his system, it was said. So basically, the only option that was left was something that was not traceable being the cause of death. And I mean, they did a really good job checking off all the possibilities. There was no alcohol, there was no smoke in his lungs or in his throat. There was no way that the cigar could have started the fire. So all of these possibilities that could have caused what happened in that room were all eliminated. Prosecutors also had friends of Kimberly's to testify against her. And they were basically saying, she told us that she wanted to kill her husband. She gave us details on what she wanted to do to get rid of Steve. Like it was no secret. Again, were those your, your friends, sis? You really need to think your, your friends through this next go round, if you get a next go round. They also have people that she's had an affair with testify. And they also bring up the friend who was the woman whose house she was supposed to be going to that night in Easton, Maryland, the night that the, the suite caught fire. Now, again, her friend's house was 15 minutes away. So everybody was confused on how sis got lost going 15 minutes away from the resort. Nonetheless, okay, you're lost, cool. Her friend said, she asked her like, why wouldn't you just call me if you got lost? I could have told you how to get here. Her response was, oh, it was late. I didn't want to bother you. So why are you coming to my house? What, what? I'm not following ma'am. So uh, the way that the prosecutors ultimately lay out the occurrence of the events that took place is they think that they went to the dinner party. She wanted to make it seem like they were in a happy space and a good space in front of other people at the dinner party. They got back to the room and maybe he did want to have sex with her or whatever and she turned him down. They think that he possibly went to sleep and once he went to sleep in that room, she injected him with the succinylcholine, which killed him. And then she staged the scene with the beer, the, the Playboy magazine, the cigars, and she tried to make it seem like he was extremely drunk and he was also smoking and he was laying on the floor and used the cigar accidentally to start a fire in the room while she was gone. And they assumed that it was for the insurance money of about $650,000 and also because she wanted out of the marriage. She wanted to continue her affairs and, you know, be with a different person that was not Steve Rico. The defense basically claimed that, oh, he could have died from inhaling the chemicals that he used at the golf course over time and nobody realized it. Wasn't nobody buying that. Nobody was having that. So she was convicted of arson and first degree murder of her husband. And from that conviction, she was sentenced to 30 years for the arson and life in prison for the murder of her husband. Now, since this case has taken place, the Science community has thankfully come up with testing that allows for the identification of succinylcholine in the body, in tissue, even after it's broken down per se by the body. So this test can be done on regular tissue. It can be done on embalmed tissue. It doesn't matter. But now we can identify it. There's that good thing that came out of this case. And yeah, that's really it. She's been in the news maybe in the last couple of years because she tends to write essays from prison. 
basically talking about different issues that she has while being a prisoner. And one of the things she talked about was, you know, not being able to hold her granddaughter and hug her granddaughter and her family suffering because she's the prisoner and they don't get the benefits of having a grandparent. Those are the consequences that you have when you commit a crime, when you kill your husband because you want money and sex from somebody else. And she's also written about more recently things like her issues with the prison because they won't let her read Game of Thrones. Sis, that's a privilege, okay? That's a privilege. I did just want to call out that again, you know, I'm here to just tell the story and the case as it occurred. There are a few things out there that I found of people saying that there was a miscarriage of justice for various reasons and possibly he was taking medications that he shouldn't have been taking with alcohol. But again, there was no alcohol in his system. So I don't know how that argument is valid. Also saying that it would take at least three minutes, if not more, to inject the amount of succinylcholine that's needed to kill a man of Steve's size, stature. And again, if he was asleep, does that matter? So these are things that people are going back and forth with in the true crime community. I'm not here to say whether they're right or wrong. I just, me personally, these are the way that things that I think about, but I was trying not to get sucked down another rabbit hole. Y'all know me in these rabbit holes. So I tried to kind of cut it off after a few articles, but either way y'all, that is the story of Kim Rico and how she got rid of her husband for money, basically, for money and freedom. When again, this is another case when you could have just walked away. There was no prenup. If you wanted the monies, you could have got his coins a different way. We got to learn to walk away. We, we got to, we've got to. But yeah, y'all, let me know if you've heard of this story before. Comment down below, y'all know I'm engaging. I love to hear your thoughts on this story. Let me know if you want more information on the skincare. As I go through, I try to kind of keep it short and sweet in the beginning and the end in terms of the products that I wanna talk about just because I don't wanna interrupt the story and I felt like talking about the story and products at the same time kind of interrupted the story and a lot of you pointed that out too. So I wanted to make the story flow as best as possible, but let me know if you want more information on the products that I'm using. In terms of products, today's mask was the Saturday Skin Yuzu Vitamin C. It's actually a sleep mask, but I use it because you can either use it as a sleep mask or you can put it on and then rinse it off. So that's how I use this today. And y'all know vitamin C is brightening, that kind of thing. And there's a lot of hydration in this mask as well. So I wanted to kind of plump the skin before I did my makeup for the day. The other thing that I used was one of my favorite sunscreens for melanated skin. This is the Biore UV Aqua Witch Watery Essence. This has royal jelly extract. It has hyaluronic acid in it. And as you can see, it's invisible on my skin. Y'all know the white cast, even if you are not dark, skinned, not super melanated, you can still get a white cast from that sunscreen sis. So make sure you're investing in some sunscreen that doesn't show up, but still is quality. And then finally, I used my Summer Fridays Cloud Dew Oil Free Gel Cream as my moisturizer today. Again, I like to use things that aren't oily on my skin, A, because I have oily skin, but B, if I'm going to be applying makeup, I don't want to already have a slick face before I put anything else on it because that's just a recipe for disaster. But yeah, guys, that is everything. Again, if you wanna check out those superfoods and supplements, make sure you hit that link down below from the reserve for 50% off products and let me know if you enjoy them. Let me know how they work for you. If you love using collagen, I know a lot of people love collagen and the vitamins for your hair, skin, and nails. So why not try these out? They taste bomb. That's it, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed this week's installment of Clean Skin, Dirty Deeds, and I will be back with y'all next week with a new installment. So until next time, y'all, it's been fun. It's been real. Love you guys. Bye.